In her home in the small town of Valley Falls, New York, Francoise we met can be found weaving on an unusual loom. It's an antique wagon wheel with nails driven into the wood. The rug Francoise will weave will be circular like the wheel, the colorful pattern emanating from the center like spokes. And it will be unique. Today, she is the only person carrying on the craft in this part of the country. I visited Francoise and her husband, Bernard, to learn more about the craft, which Francoise learned from her mother-in-law, Lucille we met. She learned from her aunt, and her aunt learned from her mother. Um, and that's as far back as we can trace it. Bernie tried to do research on it, but couldn't find any research. Because back then, they, they didn't document things, crafts that they did. They just passed them down from generation to generation. And I feel that we probably have lost various crafts because people don't continue doing them. Um, it's easier to go to a store and, and, and buy a rug. The first thing is to get a big wheel, okay? And you take the spokes out and you put nails around it. Um, now you have to get your, your main nails um, to make a cross and then you make a cross inside. So those eight nails have to be proportioned, okay? So that when you put your strands on, you have a center. So you make an X and then you make an X inside of your X, okay? Um, and so I say you have your eight pieces of pie. And then when you start your weaving strand, you go back to the very first strand that you put on your wagon wheel, and you start from there. Now your weaving strand, you want a nice long strand because when you're all, uh, that piece is done, you have to sew another piece on, okay? So I like to have a long piece um, so I don't have to do so much sewing. And then you do the inserts. The inserts is what keeps the rug flat. If you didn't uh, insert, it would bevel like a basket. Francoise learned to make wagon wheel rugs 25 years ago. Her mother-in-law, Lucille, was living in Quebec and often demonstrated the wheel weaving at French-Canadian festivals in New York. She asked Francoise to substitute for her at a festival that she wouldn't be able to attend. When they wanted her to come down again for another demonstration someplace else, um, she couldn't do it because it was during canning season. So that's a busy time. So she said, well, you saw me do it, it's easy. Well, once the rug has started, it's real easy to do it and finish it, okay? So um, I did it. Well, then someone else called and wanted a demonstration. So I said, they're burning. We have to go back to Canada. Your mother has to start the rug, which she did do. And I did that rug, finished it. And then we got another call. So I said, Tom, we have to go back. And he said, why don't you learn how to start the rug? Because apparently you're going to be doing this. And I've been doing it ever since. When I was taught, you would take old shirts, drapes, curtains, whatever you had, you would cut them into strips. You would sew the strips together, form a ball. And now the next day you're ready to make the rug because that would take a full day just to prepare your material. During the evening, during the winter, the women would do all of these things. They would prepare whatever rags they needed. They would cut them, they would sew them end to end. And then when they had what they needed, they would make a rug or they would assemble the pattern for a, for a quilt. Can you tell me about these rugs? Yes, my mother-in-law made both of these rugs here. And you can see the comparison, okay? Uh, this is solid material and this is printed. So you can see the difference in the pattern, okay? Also the type of material. Um, when she first taught me, she made the X inside the X like I showed you previously. But um, we had three layers on the original X. But it made it so thick in the center that we would take a hammer and hammer it down to flatten out the center. So now we, we just use the, the single um, strand when we're doing the rug. But you, you can see the difference in patterns by using different material. Okay. So, so these were rag rugs that she... Right. They were made out of rags, your old shirts, drapes, curtains, whatever you had um, that you couldn't make do anymore. Even if they were painted, you still use them because you tucked them underneath or something, okay? Or if there was a stain on it, you didn't worry about it. It was a way that when you got out of bed in the morning, instead of stepping on an, a cold floor, you stepped on this, and that way it wasn't so, you know, so cold on your feet. Because back then it was hard to heat, especially if your bedroom was upstairs, you know? Um, the heat didn't always get upstairs, so they made these out of necessity. It was a way of recycling your old clothes. After preparing all the materials, Bernard's mother would make a rug in one day while the children were at school. She made them for family, never selling any, except for fundraisers for the local French parish. At that time, 
other French Canadian women also made the rugs, which they would enter in yearly church competitions. Francoise and Bernard both grew up in the mill town of Cahors, an ethnically rich town filled with Canadian immigrants. They used to call it Little Canada, in fact, um, because in Cahors there were different groups. The Italians were in one section, the French in another section, the Irish up in the hill. Bernard's parents had been farmers in Quebec, and his mother was accustomed to making all the family clothing, bedding, and rugs herself as part of the overall economy of the family. She did, I don't know how many quilts. Uh, she, I know she made one for each of her grandchildren. Uh, she made what the runners, what we call catanoing, uh, on a loom. She made that almost every winter. Uh, she made, of course, the wheel rugs. Uh, she made the crocheted uh, rugs and also uh, cases for pillows, that sort of thing. She enjoyed all those things. She also knitted and embroidered. Today, Francoise uses nylon strips to make her rugs. She started using nylon when her brother found piles of the material while cleaning out an attic in Cahos, New York, the mill town where she grew up. The strips were remnants from a textile factory. They save labor because, unlike cotton, they do not need to be folded and sewn to prevent fraying. How do you um, determine your pattern and how do you choose your colors when, when you set out to make a rug? Well, sometimes I would make a small one and then see if I liked it and then make a, a big one like that. And what surprised me is some colors that you wouldn't think would go together turned out to be quite nice. And, and it's like, oh, I would never repeat this pattern. And then it's like as it progressed, because in the beginning it doesn't look like anything. When you first start, until you really get halfway through, it doesn't look like much at all. Um, but then, you know, um, your colors, you always start with a dark color and then go to a light color. And you try to choose colors that complement each other. Now, patterns, uh, when I first started doing it before I had this nylon material, when I went to the store to buy a shirt or something for Bernie, instead of buying a shirt that I thought would look good with his pants, I was buying a shirt that I thought would look nice on the rug eventually, it's a rag bag. Bernie would go into the closet for a shirt and it's like it wasn't there and he'd say, where's that shirt? And I thought, oh, I thought it was ready for the rag bag, huh? The buttons are off, you know, it's a rag now. And see, depending on uh, the width of your material, um, you can make one quickly if you want to use wide material, but I, I like narrow, so it does take longer to make. Um, and then it changes your pattern um, because if you start using narrow material and then you, at one point you use wide to insert and then go back to narrow, that will change the pattern. It's hard in the back because when you first start, you're bent over. And as your rug fill, um, fills up, then your back straightens out. But when you first start, you're because you're working in the center, okay? So depending on the size of the wheel, um, it, it's hard on the back when you first start. When you, you get to the point where you can't put in any more strands, okay? You tie your, you, um, so your weaving strand, okay, to the strand, previous woven strand that you went around. So you have to uh, do that with needle and thread. Then before you can take it off the wheel, you have to base with a needle and thread every single strand on there to your weaving strand, okay? That takes four to five hours alone, and it, it's hard on the thumb. Both Francoise and Bernard value their French Canadian heritage highly. Bernard learned French Canadian cooking from his mother and a large repertoire of traditional French Canadian songs from his parents and extended family. That Francoise is carrying on the wagon wheel weaving tradition is valuable to both of them. I think she had it would be a lost art uh, in our family. And as a matter of fact, there were never that many people in our parish who made those, who knew how to make those. You know, braided drug, no problem. But uh, there were just a handful of people who made those. And uh, at least now, uh, she carries out the tradition. And uh, one of her nieces was to learn how to make them. So hopefully there'll be somebody after her to carry on. Is it meaningful to you that, that you now are sort of the tradition bearer for this craft, that, that it was passed down in, in Bernie's family for many generations as far back as anyone knows, and now you're carrying this tradition on? Yes, it's very important to me. Um, you know, I feel very lucky that 
um, she taught me this craft. There's not very many people um, doing this craft, even when you go on the internet. There is another woman that does it, but it's a different technique. And she doesn't have any background either as to where it originated from. I wish we could get more background to it. On my side of the family, they didn't know anything about it. No. As far as you know, you may be the only family that has this, this tradition. Right. Uh, th this technique, um, this craft, and you know, um, my niece, my grandniece is uh, perhaps interested in doing it, so she would like to learn. So. But she, she's going to college, so I told her, I said, there's plenty of time. I said, when she comes back, you know, I'll still be doing it.